October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, the time to spread awareness of the importance of hiring people with disabilities and to celebrate the progress that we have made in disability employment as we look back on its history. In 1920, following World War I, President Woodrow Wilson signs the Smith-Fess Act that establishes the Vocational Rehabilitation Program for Americans with Disabilities. Only individuals with physical disabilities were eligible for services. In New York City in 1935, a group called the League for Physically Handicapped forms to protest discrimination by the Works Progress Administration. The League's 300 people had been turned down for work after their applications had been stamped PH for physically handicapped. The members staged sit-ins, which eventually led to a few thousand jobs nationwide, finally drawing attention to the discrimination of employment for people with disabilities. That same year, the Social Security Act of 1935 became law, establishing an income maintenance system for those unable to work by providing benefits to unemployed individuals and retirees. At the end of World War II in 1945, President Harry Truman declared the first week in October National Employ the Physically Handicapped Week. In 1962, physically was removed from the title. In 1947, Truman assembled a committee to manage the Employment Week. State and local committees coordinated publicity campaigns consisting of movie trailers, billboards, and radio and television ads to convince the public that it is good business to hire people with disabilities. In 1961, JFK created the President's Panel on Mental Retardation and called upon America to address the significant needs of people with intellectual disabilities and their desire to be a part of everyday life in America. In 2003, President George W. Bush renamed the committee the President's Committee for People with Intellectual Disabilities. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973 marked a major step forward in the legislation impacting the employment of people with disabilities, prohibiting discrimination on the basis of disability by federally funded and assisted programs, federal employers, and federal contractors. In April 1975, a 150-person sit-in in San Francisco led by Judith Heumann and Kitty Cohn lasted 28 days. As a result, U.S. Secretary of Health, Education and Welfare Joseph Califano signed regulations implementing Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, extending civil rights to people with disabilities, including employment services. In 1983, the Job Accommodation Network, JAN, opened, which was the first of its kind technical assistance center that provided free, expert, and confidential guidance on workplace accommodations and disability employment services. The service began with two consultants using two telephone lines and expanded to serve private employers of all sizes, government agencies, employee representatives, and service providers, as well as people with disabilities and their families. In 1989, Congress expanded National Employee the Handicap Week to National Disability Employment Awareness Month, which is now recognized every October. In 1990, President George H.W. Bush signed the Americans with Disabilities Act into law. Its employment provisions prohibited employment discrimination. In 1992, amendments to the Rehabilitation Act emphasized employment as the primary goal of vocational rehabilitation. Around this time, a number of leading businesses recognized disability as a key part of diversity and incorporated it into their workplace inclusion initiatives. The U.S. Business Leadership Network is formed to serve as the collective voice for this movement nationally. In 1996, the Small Business Job Protection Act created the Work Opportunity Tax Credit Program, providing federal tax credit to companies that hire workers from populations that face high rates of unemployment, including people with disabilities. In 1999, the U.S. Supreme Court issues the landmark Olmstead v. L.C. decision, declaring segregation of people with disabilities a form of discrimination when integrated community-based settings are an option. Following a 1999 recommendation from the Presidential Task Force on Employment of Adults with Disabilities, Congress establishes the Office of Disability Employment Policy, ODEP, an agency within the U.S. Department of Labor. This landmark created a permanent entity to focus on disability within the context of federal labor policy. In 2009, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act substantially increased funding for the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and provided more than $500 million for vocational rehabilitation services, including job training, education, and placement. In 2014, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, known as WIOA, becomes the first update to the nation's workforce development system since 1998. It reauthorizes and amends crucial programs to help job seekers access the services they need to succeed in employment and match employers with skilled workers. At MOPD, we are committed to an inclusive workforce in New York City. And throughout the month, we are emphasizing the importance of hiring people with disabilities and highlighting once and for all that 
At work, it's what you can do that matters.